Yes. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Planning Board Public Meeting of November 7th, 2019. Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Please be advised this meeting has been duly advertised according to Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, otherwise known as Sunshine Law. Notice of the 2019 annual meeting schedule has been provided to the officially designated newspapers, the township clerk, and posted on the bulletin board here at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex. I have roll call, please. Mr. Bed, Mr. Weinstein, Mr. Senator Amita, Committee in the Pawnee, and Mayor of Delcor are absent. Mr. Scobo? Here. Mr. Beeson? Present. Mr. Wagner? Here. Mr. Essay? Here. Vice Chair Julian? Here. Mr. Sarraj? Here. Okay. <clears throat> First up, consideration of meeting minutes. May I have a motion to approve the October 3rd uh, <clears throat> regular meeting minutes? Eligible okay. members are Wagner, Sirachi, Julian, Scobo, and Hashtag. I'll make a motion. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. <clears throat> Any comments from Dais? Okay. Seeing none, roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Scobo? Yes. Mr. Hashtag? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Julian? Yes. Chair Sarraj? Yes. Next, consideration of resolutions. <clears throat> First one is a Swiss Orthopedic, file number 19-PB-08-SP. May I have a motion? Eligible members, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman or Mr. Julian, Mr. Wagner, Mr. Scobo. I'll make that motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, any comments from the dais? Okay, hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Scobo? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Vice Chair Julian? Yes. Is that it? No. Oh. A quick one. Okay. We're going to pull no. Huh? We're going to pull the next one and watch the attorney go. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> next uh, <clears throat> resolution for consideration Gibraltar Rock. Updates, file 19-PB-09-SP, may I have a motion? Mr. Julian, Mr. Wagner, Mr. Scobo. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, any comments from the dais? Hearing none, roll call please. Mr. Scobo? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Vice Chair Julian? Yes. Okay, <clears throat> we do not have any playing board business on the agenda. Um, next business from the floor, if there's anyone here that <clears throat> would like to address planning board on, on any matter that is not on the agenda, please come forward. Okay, state your name and address for the record. Joseph P. Maloney, 27 Stonewick Drive, Hillsborough, New Jersey, the best place to live in America. Um, my questions are just cleanup questions concerning uh, the reexamination report for the master plan. Uh, specifically, page 40 and 41, where the, the board um, made some specific rec uh, recommendations in order to improve the master plan. Um, just wondering where we're at with that um, in terms of updating the master plan. Um, it was specifically mentioned that the housing element, once we're, we were resolved with fair share housing, that that would be updated and understand that that should wait. I just want to know if there's any additional movement on the circulation element plan, if the historic um, commission submitted their updates to the, the um, historic preservation plan, including districts that weren't inclu um, included on the original. And there's a few others here. Um, the, sustainability plan, et cetera. It's just a, an update for myself and right. I guess for the public. All right. <clears throat> well, I know we do have a subcommittee or a master plan subcommittee, but I haven't seen any communications from them as yet. So I don't know, Patrick, if you might. Um, I can kindly give you my business card if you would uh, email our office tomorrow and then um, we can supply you with, with uh, the appropriate um, information that you, that you need. If there's any updates at, at this point or not. Okay, very good. Yep, I'm by uh, Pat Gorman. I'm the zoning yep. officer. Assistant. No, you will. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> okay. 
Anyone else from the public on matters not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none. <clears throat> we do not have any considerations uh, or ordinance consideration, so we will move on to this evening's application, which is Somerset County YMCA, the Hillsborough branch, <clears throat> file 19-PB-16-SPV, dash dash um, involving lock, or block 12, lot 22, otherwise known as 19, or commonly known as 19 East Mountain Road in, in Hillsborough. Uh, <clears throat> Councilor? Mr. Chairman, Michael Silvaggi from uh, Labor Silvaggi, Abermice. Oh, on, you have to speak in the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, pick this up. <laughs> Um, again, uh, Michael Silvaggi from Labor Silvaggi Abermas Cohen on behalf of the applicant, the Somerset uh, YMCA of Hillsboro. Is it off? Uh, is it on? <clears throat> you could use one of the one on the desk. Yeah. Got to just bring it close because it doesn't. Um, <laughs> Michael right. Silvaggi from uh, Labor Silvaggi Abermas Cohen uh, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, the uh, Somerset County YMCA, the Hillsborough branch. Um, the application this evening is, uh, we hope to be, you know, uh, relatively straightforward and brief. Uh, the Y is looking to uh, construct a slightly larger than 1,000 square foot concrete pad that will house a HVAC unit uh, that's needed for its uh, current operations. Um, it's really about it. The application, though, does require an amended site plan, and the uh, use of the pad uh, triggers two bulk variances, <coughs> one for impervious surface, and then your zoning ordinances uh, do not allow this uh, apparatus to be located in the front yard. So we will have planning testimony that will uh, offer justification in support of the bulk variance relief started, uh, or required, excuse me. What I'd like to do, Mr. Chairman, if I may, is John Gorman, who's a representative of the Y, uh, will testify, just to kind of give you guys an explanation as to what the reason is for this, and then we'll move into our uh, mechanical engineering, and we'll finish up with our civil and uh, planning testimony. Okay. John? Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may. Yes. Uh, there's also a couple of submission waivers with this application. Mm -hmm. uh, one for community impact statement, one for environmental impact statement, and one for uh, NG NJDEP uh, application submission. Um, and speaking with the uh, applicants engineer in the past, they will have testimony on these items tonight. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. John Gorman. I'm the <coughs> vice president of property development mm -hmm. for the summer. No, no, good. We're going to swear you in. Yeah, we're sorry. Swear you in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just for any testimony, give tonight's truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. And just real close to the mic, stick play anyway. Uh, John, J O H N, Gorman, G O R M A N. Okay. It, yeah, move that over. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Gorman, uh, what's your position with the uh, Y? I'm the vice president of property development. All right. And what is that? What are your job duties associated I'm with that? responsible for the building maintenance improvement and capital improvements for all of our Somerset County YMCAs, including um, repairs, renovation, building, and, and new buildings. And I assume in that capacity you're very familiar with the operations here at the Hillsborough branch. Yes. And you know, the Hillsborough branch has been uh, around for how long? Uh, since 94. Okay. And uh, current days and hours of operation? Um, currently, we're open Monday through Friday, uh, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, 6.30 to 8, 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 6, 6 p.m. All right. And what type of, maybe you can get a couple of new members here, what type of programming <laughs> Does the uh, Y offer in Hillsborough? Uh, the YMCA offers a variety of programs from uh, daycare camp, uh, after school program, uh, swimming lessons, um, including uh, open swim, swim teams. We actually uh, host the practice for the high school swimming team. And the, uh, we also offer fitness and wellness programs in, in addition to basketball. So everything for wellness and also social responsibility in our community. All right. And I should have asked you, wh where's in case there are board members or members of the public who don't know where this location is, what's the street address? 19 East Mountain Road in Hillsborough. Okay. Uh, and your current facility is approximately how large? It's uh, about 38,000 square feet. Okay. Um, and um, <coughs> is, is all of the activities 
in the interior of the building or do you have any outdoor uh, activities? We do have some outdoor activities which would be part of our camp which we actually do in the area if you're familiar with the property that is uh, closest to our the, between us and the DPW and our parking lot we actually have a playground on the um, east mountain side that is fenced in for our daycare uh, child care program all those activities are completed with supervision so there's not a time when children are out there unsupervised okay. um, so let's get right into what we're, what we're doing here uh, what is it actually the Y is hoping to uh, achieve here? We are looking to achieve the, um, the concrete pad and the fencing around it to replace an obsolete or um, HVA system, V system for our pool that is beyond its usable life. Um, we are unable to put it in its current position as it is on a mezzanine level and we couldn't get the unit back in there and the unit would not be able to be supported on the roof. So that's why we're requesting this um, pad to be put down um, so that we can put the new unit on so we can maintain the quality of the air in our pool. Now, is it roughly the same size unit that's currently inside? Or it's it actually a larger unit. Okay. And, and for the HVA system, is that something that you just is it run all the time? Is it run seasonally? Yeah, what, what's, how often will it be in use? It runs um, all the time. Um, however, during the prime use, it would run, um, we'd have to have it run so that we would exhaust the air correctly. Um, in non-prime hours, it would basically be in more of an economy mode that just keeps the air circulating in the pool. Okay. And um, the, the Y is intending, if, if we get the approval, put the concrete pit, put the unit there, and then put a fence around it? Yes. All right. And also some landscaping. All right. And the unit itself is not really near you know, the entrance of the building. It's not near the playground or anything, correct? No. It's it, not at all. Okay. Um, would there really be any public access or activity on the side of the building where this is going to be located? Um, the only public, not public activity, the only supervised activity with the... Um, program that's in the playground in the back area. Okay. Um, I, I don't really have anything further. I mean, we'll get into more detail with our, our other witnesses, but um, if anybody has questions for Mr. Gorman, wants to sign up. Okay. <coughs> Any questions from the day? <coughs> right. Professional. Mr. Gorman, just one clarification. Um, you indicated that the proposed unit is nowhere near the playground or the play area. According to your site plan, it is immediately adjacent to a fenced-in area that is no, notated as play sets. To the public. To the public, to the public. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. So it is located next to the playground, as I said, but it's not where public is in. It's a supervised program. Okay. 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 <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to open up the public. So moved. A second. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. If there's anyone from the public that would like to question this witness on their testimony, please come up. Okay. Seeing none, I guess you're done for now. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Joe. It's a very important one, Mr. Murphy. Um, Joe, uh, I don't know if you've testified in front of this board in the past, but uh, if you haven't, what's your educational background and experience in mechanical engineering matters? Uh, I'm licensed in, as a PE in the state of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York. Uh, I've been a uh, consulting engineer. Yep. Closer. Um, for about 40 years. I have a company in Chester, New Jersey, which we do mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineering. And have you testified in uh, land use matters in the past? Yes. Okay. Um, and you've been accepted as an expert in those 
yes. other items. Uh, and your license is current? Yes. Okay. Unless there's any objections, we'll accept your qualifications. No. Uh, Joe, you've had an opportunity to review uh, the site plan drawings, correct? Yes. Uh, and have you had a chance to review the engineer and planners reports that were prepared? Yes. By the board. Um, and, and and so doing that, um, there were questions raised, and, and I'm referring to, um, I guess, Mr. Uh, Gorman's report. Um, asking questions about whether the unit would comply with the township's performance standards with respect to noise and heat. And you've had a chance to look at it. What's your opinion on that? It does. Um, it, we design not only the equipment, but also the fencing and the acoustical um, shielding that's going to be on the inside of the fencing so that we do comply with those standards. And I know the acoustical is your standards are the same as the state of New Jersey. There's requirements for night and day, and it exceeds those requirements. Now, is that with, is, is the unit itself meet those standards? We designed the unit to meet the standards. Okay. We actually did the acoustic to give us a level of confidence that we would achieve these. these <coughs> and then kind of in a belt and suspenders approach, what have we done, you mentioned it, but specifically with the fencing, I mean, what you said, the acoustical material, how, what is that? Well, it's a, um, it absorbs some of the sound and also will block the sound. Um, so our closest is, you know, I guess on South Branch, uh, it's about 200 feet away from where the equipment would emit the noise. Uh, so. We have the 10-foot fence, and we went higher than the unit. The unit's about seven feet. We're going about three feet above, and putting an acoustical uh, blanket, basically. It's about an eighth-inch thick blanket that will go from the ground all the way to the top of the fence. And on the other side of the fence, we have slats just for appearance. Mm -hmm. So in your estimation, that will further reduce certainly the noise, correct? Yes. Um, any concerns, or should there be any concerns, uh, because the township stands to talk about heat or vibration, would that? No. Okay. Um, and what about the connection itself? I mean, is there, I think the uh, board engineer had talked about whether there was a need for, you know, new connections or anything like that. The existing utilities, the unit requires natural gas, electric. Um, and those two services we can derive from the building itself. So there's no new upgrade to the service of the building. Um, we're able to tie it into to those utilities. And the, the control panel, will that be within the fenced area? Is that going to be the, the inside the building? The, the unit is an integral unit, so the controls are on board to the unit. Uh, there will be a remote panel in the building so that uh, maintenance can do the operation of the unit and turn it on, turn it off, um, have some control. But the, the controls of the unit are integral to the unit, and that will be on board, which is the outside. Okay. Um, and the, um, uh, there was also a question, the applicant uh, looking for the required clear space uh, for the equipment uh, and whether the plans are compliant with that. The unit, the doors require four feet around the unit. We designed it for five feet on three sides. On the other side, it's actually a little bit more. Uh, and that was really uh, from the unit. We have to come off the top with duct work. So we need a little bit more room than that. I think it's about eight feet or so. Any lighting required in terms of, you know, within the compound area, if you will? Um, what we'll have is we'll have an outlet out there, so if they have to do service at night, someone could put a light on. Uh, and there will also be a light, a small light on the unit that would be turned on and off for maintenance. But again, that would be shielded by the fence and everything else. It so would there, be. there'll be no light admitted. So um, I think, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, in terms of Joe's expertise, I think we've hit upon those, although I'd certainly 
uh, defer to Bob or Pat if they have additional questions we didn't hit. Um, I'm, I'm satisfied with the testimony regarding my letter. My only uh, question would be with the proximity of the unit next to the playgrounds while it's running during the day, which was previously testified a little bit uh, more intense. Will that have any impacts on any of the activity in those playground areas? Will it be too loud? Will it be humming? Will, it, no. will you not be able to talk to the children and they won't be able to hear you because... No. It, the, the sound levels uh, on the other side of the fence will be about 55 dB during the day, okay. which is, is not, you know, you can definitely talk over that. That's like office space. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Just a couple of questions from my side. Um, how is this unit accessed? Is there a, it's going to be a door in the building to access this area, or is it going to be a gate on There'll the There'll be a gate on the fence. On the fence? Uh, a double gate. Okay. Um, and then uh, I noticed on the detail of the plan, um, it didn't include any of the slats for the fence or the sheeting detail that you described. Would that uh, just be a condition of approval? that those details be added to the plan? That's fine. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, the area that's being taken up by the utility pad, there was, there used to be a ball court there for some reason, and it's noted that it will be moved. Is there an idea where that will be moved to at, at this point? Mr. Kennedy will handle that. Okay. And... Um, uh, one last condition of my letter was that landscaping be provided to satisfaction. Okay. We'll talk Great. about that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any questions? In case? Uh, I guess, um, yeah, the only thing that came up in the Environmental Commission, every th there was no um, environmental disturbances, but we just talked about that during construction, no trees be removed as part of the installation of the HVAC unit and concrete pad. So, and then um, I'm just asking this as a question too, but in terms of just there, there's a tick up in terms of impervious servicing increase from 42.2 to 42.5, I guess back in 2000, oh, 1993, it was 41%, but now it's 15%. So as long as you're okay with that, then yeah. we just, that came up at the Environmental Commission. So I just wanted to bring that up for discussion if we need to. Oh. But. Uh, for, for me? I'm yeah. Oh, I'm I didn't know if you're looking at me already. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was looking at you, Mr. Gorman. We'll help Mr. Gorman out. Yeah, we have uh, Mr. Kennedy who's going to testify next. We'll okay. Talk about that. sorry. That's all right. Okay. It was, I guess the question was for whoever can answer it. <laughs> And I guess the only question, <clears throat> getting back with the sound padding that's in there. So <clears throat> is that, you know, required to meet the current sound ordinances or is? The unit itself will meet the sound okay. uh, ordinance, which is the 65 EBA during the day and 58 at night. Okay. Uh, we put the sound to give us a... I'm sorry, microphone, please. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we put the, the acoustical... Um, uh, padding on the fence to give us a level mm -hmm. of safety from you know the published values that we get from the equipment manufacturer. Okay, and what's the durability? I mean, is there since it'll be exposed to obviously the elements, the uh, the padding? They it, it's guaranteed for ten years. Okay. The, their actual warranty, which is, will be longer than that, but that's what they warranty it for. Okay. One last shot. Okay. Thank you. Public. Oh, you know what? You could. <laughs> Is there anyone from the public that would like to? No. Nope. Sorry, the shake. <laughs> and then um, our final witness. Ronald Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. 
pretty dramatic. I used to get boost. We had that all orchestrated. Um, Ron, uh, again, I, I, I know many people are probably familiar with your uh, field of expertise, but your experience, uh, education Sorry. background. Uh, first of all, Ron Kennedy from Gladstone Design. Uh, I'm a professional licensed planner and engineer. I've been testifying um, uh, since I think it was 1987, since I've been uh, an engineer and a planner in the state of New Jersey. Been before this board a few times. Last was the Sylvie Quarry with the uh, solar project that was probably two or three years ago that, that we did. And been involved with Roycebrook Country Club or Golf Club for many years uh, before different groups before this town. Uh, I do testify uh, too many nights a week uh, before boards throughout the state of New Jersey, probably over uh, 250 boards that I've testified before uh, in similar types of projects to this, real estate land development applications. And your license is current? It is. Uh, both as a planner and a, an engineer? It right? is. Right. Okay. <clears throat> if there's no objections. <clears throat> we'll accept your credentials. Proceed, you. please. I'm gonna, do you want me to do all three boards? I got three boards tonight. Is yeah. that easier? Just keep it moving. Just to be uh, expeditious, I have three exhibits. First one is a aerial exhibit uh, with today's date on it. Okay. A1, we'll A1. call that, Mr. Bernstein. Yes. You want to describe briefly, Mr. Kennedy, what that is? It is. It's an aerial exhibit uh, from the uh, state aerials, and it has an outline of the property uh, at the intersection of South Branch Road and East Mountain Road. Mark, that is A1. I did. Okay. A2 record. is overall site plan rendering. And again, it's a background of the aerial exhibit, and then it has overlaid our, our site plan on it. On the right side has the zoning chart and the zoning criteria. Created when, sir? Same date, November 7th, 2019. Thank you. Uh, you might want to not put that up just yet because it's going to end up. All right, and the last exhibit is enlarged site plan rendering. And again, similar to the application that's been before you, it just has a, a more detailed of the area around the actual pad itself with the piece of equipment. Label that A3, November 7th, 2018. Right. Well, mark it as A3. At some point, you're going to need to put it up on the easel, but one of them is going to have to come down in the process. Both up or not? Yeah, just for the moment, I would keep both up. If you, at some point you want to put A3 up, you, you're more than welcome to. Thank you. As um, I started with exhibit A1, it's an aerial exhibit, and north is straight up. The property in question is uh, six acres uh, of land as the YMCA property itself. Uh, South Branch Road is diagonal across the sheet. And then uh, lower uh, left to uh, the middle of the sheet is East Mountain Road. The property itself, as the building, which is 38,000 square foot, has the parking lot that generally is to the rear of the building from South Branch Road, but the front <coughs> entrance to the building is actually in the rear. And then it also has an exit on the south side that goes back out to uh, uh, East Mountain Road. Uh, exit in only on South Branch, exit out and in on uh, East Mountain. Uh, for the most part, the property behaves like the front door is in the rear, and that's where most of the people, all the people enter the property, and the back or rear of the property actually faces the intersection of uh, South Branch and East Mountain Road. When uh, you look at the neighborhood, the predominant feature is the public works buildings uh, and complex that's to the left side of the sheet or to the west of the sheet, residential across the street, um, on uh, South Branch Road, and a combination of residential and retail on the uh, south uh, east side of the road. The property itself is all in the R zone. Uh, that's totally in the R zone, both the Public Works Building as well as the YMCA. Across the street, um, that is in a, uh, a commercial zone uh, directly across the street. I believe it's the, it's the C1 zone that's across the street. When I go over to exhibit A2, 
shows in a little farther in. You see in the, the brown area, the light tan, is the building itself. The expansion of this pad, or the pad itself, is shown to where my pointer is now, to the east of the building, towards the front yard. And what you can do, certainly going to define is the front yard of both South Branch to the top of the sheet and East Mountain to the, left, uh, to the right side of the sheet. That itself is going, uh, is proposed to be 20 foot wide by 50 foot long, and it's to house this one piece of equipment. It's a single piece of equipment that's uh, talking about putting placed on the ground. And it, it shows a 10 foot fence chain link that you heard some descriptions from Joe around the outside of that fence. The features that make up the area of the front yard is a tree-lined or tree area that is on uh, East Mountain Road itself, right off the building. <clears throat> and then in the area my pointer is now just to the north of that treed area is a relatively large berm that's there. It's about an eight to 10 foot high, the berm itself, um, that, that is at the intersection. It goes fairly close to the intersection, but by the time it gets down near the intersection, it's back down to grade again. The berm doesn't go all the way to the intersection. The features in this front yard it are the playground that was discussed, and that's an enclosed area with a fence. I think it's a four or five foot high fence that's enclosed, and that's used for the daycare center. And then there was also this little, uh, I think they call it a, um, a, a play ball area or something. It's, it's an octagonal space that's maybe 20 foot across that has these boards that are about a foot and a half to two foot high that was around that area. It's just another area that's actually gonna be relocated and on this plan, the relocation I'm showing on this exhibit, which is not on your plan, is somewhere where they do the can. So generally in the rear side of the property, um, towards the public works building, is where they're proposing to relocate that area. And again, it's just these battens that are about a foot and a half to two foot high, makes about a 20 foot uh, octagonal area around there that they play a, a, a game inside of. So it's a, a very um, easy, I'll say temporary type of structure that's there. That, that's not that high that they're going to relocate to that area. The next exhibit, I'll take A2 down, put A3. And this actually shows, again, zoomed in farther, the actual pad itself. The darker color, a shaded area in gray, is the physical shape of the piece of equipment. And the lighter area around the perimeter is the limits of the pad. There's a fence opening that's located on the bottom part of the south part. Uh, that's a double uh, fence opening. And there's also a man door into the building right at this location there that provides access into this space. The fenced-in area around the playground doesn't change. There's no proposed change that, that is in there. Uh, I am showing physical connections and utilities that are both gas, electric, and some type of water or more of the return duct work that would go from the actual unit itself to the corner of the building here, which is where all the mechanical equipment is in the building right now. So there'll be something that will go here. All the details of that plumbing, plumbing the piping, it's not been designed yet, that will as they go to the construction details. But there'll be some buried equipment that would be along here. And there would have to be a temporary um, disturbance into that play area in order to make those connections. As far as some basic numbers for the project, it's 119 feet from the right-of-way line on East Mountain to the proposed corner of the fence itself. And it's 130 feet from the South Branch uh, right-of-way line to the corner, the north corner of this enclosure. Your zoning in the R zone requires 50 feet. So we're well within the actual setback itself, we're almost two, two and a half times the setback that's required. But because it is considered standalone or accessory, it's not allowed in your front yard and thus the deviation of the variance that we're considering. If it was lifted off the ground and attached to the building, we wouldn't need this variance. It would be part of the building. But it is a pad that's mm -hmm. physically on the ground. The structure itself is not attached to the building. So it is considered accessory and we're seeking relief. The other aspect that was talked about in the beginning of the application is the zone in the R zone only allows for 15% lot coverage. When this is 42.3% right now, and it would add by the 1,000 square foot, 
it would go to 43 or 42.5 percent, so a 0.2 percent increase in the impervious coverage. A de minimis, obviously, but one of the things that we looked at when we went back through some of the old records when this was originally approved is this neighborhood, this area, this region, um, back in the um, 80s and 90s, the county was doing regional stormwater management plans. And this is part of that regional stormwater management plan. So while there's nothing that's on this property specifically, it ties into a bigger system that goes into a regional stormwater management plan. So at, at least I can safely say that it's part of a plan that already exists. Uh, it's a de minimis impact associated with that. I didn't go back and look at that plan from the, uh, the original proposals there, but it is part of a regional uh, stormwater management system that was designed by the county and the township back, started in the 80s and went into the 90s. Um, I don't believe by 1,000 square foot is going to have a significant impact on this area. It doesn't go to a neighboring property before it gets into an existing storm sewer system. So the typical impacts one would be worried about is I'm going to do something negatively to a neighbor. In this case, it all flows towards the intersection of um, those two roadways, gets into those storm sewer systems, and goes into that regional system as opposed to flowing through a neighbor property. So all that being said, I think the applicant itself has gone through the, the components of those review letters that were the technical aspects. And I just want to make sure we touched on all those. <clears throat> Although it was a question too about a, a couple of things. The, the property itself is um, outside of any wetland area at all and we had an environmental consultant come down and look at the property, toward the property and had an opinion that there's no um, uh, uh, wetlands or repairing corridors on the property or within the surrounding area. We also looked at the floodplain and the mapping itself of the floodplain is there's no floodplain that's in this area. There's no mapping on the flood insurance rate map since in the zone X, which is not regulated at all. Uh, the closest area that is regulated for any floodplain at all is more than a half a mile away from this location. So um, in, in general speak, it's a pretty high and dry property that doesn't have any of the typical environmental constraints you would see uh, on a property that just doesn't exist on this piece. I think that generally covers Let me just the review. While you're getting sorted, as we spoke about it, what about um, landscaping around the exterior of the fencing? Uh, that was a recommendation, I think, in the planner's uh, report and the Environmental Commission as well. Anything proposed? And if not, yeah. what? why not? Yeah, well, we didn't show in the application. We certainly agree we will. I mean, that's not a problem in, in doing something. Um, it is fairly shielded from the, the road system itself. If you want to say where it leaks at all, either by the existing vegetation or the berm, it would be more towards the intersection of South Branch Road near um, uh, East Mountain. Um, but we, we would gladly put in you know, vegetation that's along there, something that's appropriate some um, evergreen vegetation ar around that. We can work with your planning staff on the appropriate uh, m materials that would be around there. But certainly something that can soften that look. We don't have any problem putting those in there. Applicant would allow that as a condition of approval. Yes. Thank you. And, and before we forget, I know Mr. Uh, Julian had raised a question uh, as well. You were here when, when his question was asked? I did. All right. So about the impervious coverage? Yeah. So again, I, I would say that it's, um, you know, the, the, the jump in impervious coverage is de minimis for the 1,000 feet. Um, what was interesting is the original approval was 41, you know, a, a, a percent to 42.3 percent that we calculated now. We went and took the original plans that were done back in the 90s and compared it, and it's pretty close, you know, to what is there today. So I don't see a significant deviation or an expansion that was done without site plan approval. It looks like out of everything I thought was critical, one island may have been taken out when they put the solar panels in. But everything else is pretty consistent with the loading area, with the um, the parking spaces, with the sidewalk spaces that were in front of the building. Uh, but when we used our technology today as opposed to a scale back in the, the 90s, um, that's what the number's coming out to, uh, is that, that percentage. But uh, again, comparing 
the originally approved site plans to what's there today with our updated plan, it is pretty close to what's there in the original, what was approved originally, other than maybe one parking lot island. Yeah, I mean, it's the minimus increase, increase for, for now. I mean, it says it was originally, the, the impervious coverage for the site was 15% in 1993. I don't know why it was that back then, but since that time, I mean, you've had experience with the storm water, and so this is not going to affect it, in my and opinion. It looks like by the original approval, though, they did get a variance for yeah, it. Yeah, that's for, what I would imagine. That, that aspect. Obviously, it was different than a residential house right. on a, a, a half-acre lot. You would look to have a 15% lot cover. Yeah. But in this case, it was a commercial-type development for this institution, and a, a, a variance was granted to 41%. Right. That's what caused that increase. It did. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank you. But we still have this little delta from the 41% right. that was approved. Now when we measure it's 42.5, so that was the explanation that there's something a little off from those numbers slightly right. from, from what we calculated today versus what was approved back then. Understood. And, and while you're looking to just uh, any vegetation, trees to be removed, I know that was a question both in the plan or in the Environmental Commission's reports. Yeah, I, there, there, I'll, I'll say this. There's no need to have those, but if it's, it should be a condition of approval. So a contractor doesn't come in and do something that, that we certainly don't expect. But, um, yeah, there, there's no reason to have disturbance of that existing vegetation. So we can agree that Mr. Bernstein is a condition if that's the direction you want to go with it. The applicant's willing to accept that? Yes. As far as the you know the two variances again, uh, I'm going to say is the, the 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 proofs that we're doing is we're looking at this as a, a, a C2 variance uh, for this. Obviously, um, uh, the use is permitted. Um, we're consistent with that use. We're not trying to change that use. We're not adding intensity to the use. Um, we're just trying to uh, uh, say replace a piece of equipment. And as you heard in the testimony before, the solution after they looked at the different alternatives was this as the, the, the best solution for the, the property um, to put that in the front yard and that additional 1,000 square foot pad. Um, and again, our proof has to be that the benefits of the deviation would have to substantially outweigh any detriments, that the variance can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good in the zone plan. Um, and um, we have to certainly look at the negative criteria on impacts associated with that. As we've all, all the professionals discussed uh, on this is um, it is one of a location that's chosen based on the circumstances that are there. The historic development pattern associated with the rear of the building from a, 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 a planning standpoint is actually the front of the building as far as its behavior. And that's where all the access comes in. That's where the people park and they walk into that building and most of that pedestrian flow goes through that area. The back of the building is uh, 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 circumstantial, but it faces the two public road systems that, that are associated with this. And that's where we're putting it in back of the building as opposed to the front of the building, but it's on your two frontages. The good news is we're two and a half times the setback that's required by the zoning ordinance um, that um, while it's in the front yard, it is screened by existing vegetation, a berm that's there. We're putting fencing around it with a fabric and we're agreeing to put additional screening that's there. So certainly the protection of the zone plan and the impacts to the community are, are, are minimized. And uh, what our plan is trying to propose is that uh, after this is approved, built, the vegetation's put in, the screening's put on, you're not gonna notice this driving by, both on South Branch Road or on uh, East Mountain Road. And that's our intent of the design that we're really trying to accomplish here. As far as the additional impervious coverage, uh, similarly, it's, it's de minimis uh, that we're trying to add on there, keeping the pad as relatively tight as possible to the building. We don't need a long path to connect the two um, uh, to a, a door or an area that needs to back a truck up to. It's just the area around that, so we're trying to minimize that to the greatest extent practicable. Um, we understand that it is part of a regional master plan, so that it gives a little comfort that it is getting some treatment that, that is going to that area. And as I stated before, the discharge of that water in that area is goes to an existing storm sewer system in those two public road systems and doesn't travel across the neighbor's property. And I think that is something that's beneficial as well, that we know that it's being captured at least and going to that storm sewer system. 
So I do think uh, that the, the combination of those elements uh, the board can look on, the fact that it really doesn't have any substantial impact uh, to those neighbors, to the zone plan, and to your, your zoning ordinance. So we'd look to uh, have this board feel positive towards approving um, uh, what I think is a pretty simple uh, aspect of, of uh, the addition to the property. I have nothing further from Mr. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Kennedy, just one question. During your testimony, you mentioned that there's going to be duct work coming from the unit and going into the building, of course. How's that going to be? Is that going to be exposed at all on the outside? I, I'm not sure it's duct work. I think Joe may say duct work. I, I understand there's piping, plumbing below okay. grade, but we can ask if there's going to be above grade duct work. I, I don't know that. There, there's a, a return and a supply duct that will come off the top of the unit okay. and, and go across uh, into the building. Okay. Will that be above the fence? It will be above the fence. No. But we, we, we made it that it's round duct um, and it will be painted to match the building. Mm -hmm. So, that's you know, we've tried to do everything possible to really minimize uh, what, you know, the aesthetics of it. That would be acceptable. Okay. I do have a couple engineering questions. <coughs> no. Yep. Not your engineering, mechanical mm -hmm. engineering. <coughs> because I know you had mentioned it was natural gas <coughs> to run the HVAs. So, <coughs> so the exhaust from the system, where's? It would be, there's a furnace right. that would be approximately here. Okay. And is that just going straight up or is it? There's no chimney, no you know, okay. it's, a, it's like, this is very similar to a HVAC air conditioning unit. You can see okay. Roof. So there's not a stack or anything that okay. you're going to see a chimney off of. Okay. And as far as the drainage for the condensation, where is that? Right now we have it that it would be just uh, going onto a, a drip pan on the, okay. on the concrete. And just go on to the soil. Okay. And that condensate is really just from the dehumidification of the air. Right. From um, the pool area. So yeah. I know it gets pretty humid in there. So. Right. And that's exactly the old system, besides it being old, only had heating and ventilating. This will have cooling, which allowed to dehumidify so we can keep the space at a good relative humidity, not too high. Okay. <clears throat> Anything? Okay. Any questions from Dave? Okay. Yeah, I, I mentioned the fence before, and it's a double fence. Is there a lock on that? There will be a lock, right? Yes. Like, okay. I'm just curious. So it'll always be locked. Yes. Right. And then a follow-up on Mr. Gorman's question. I think uh, you mentioned there's like the piping like over the fence. Before there was talk about it might disturb some land near the play area, but is Will it also disturb some land in the play area? We have to bring the, um, we have to bring the gas generation and there'll be electric that will be brought across there from where the mechanical room in the building is. Oh, it's actually, the, the electrical is coming inside the building, which is down here. The electrical room is, is this south? Yes. South, uh, part of the uh, building. It's going to go from that mechanical uh, electrical room up into the attic, run along in the attic, and then come out where it needs to uh, come to the unit. And it's going to follow. We're going to have ductwork, as we said, coming off the top going into the building. There's going to be a stanchion that's going to hold it. We're going to run the gas piping and the electric conduit on that stanchion underneath the ductwork into the unit. So you won't even see that from, you know, Okay. It'll be below the 10 feet. All right, and a lot of that's inside as well. So right. there's not going to be a lot of work outside near the play area where I was worried about safety and make sure it's closed not out. The electrical or the that. gas. The gas comes from the north side and again is in the attic. And we're going to tap into a four inch line in the attic and again come across one of the stanchions. Okay. okay. So then it sounds like there'll be less disturbance on that ground first talked about it, they were talking about putting some pipes there. So right. from this plan that Joe's talking about, as it evolves, it's less 
physical ground disturbance that would be there temporarily. Okay, thank you. Any additional comments, questions? Okay, anyone from the public that would like to Chairman. question? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I have a couple. Oh, you have. I'm sorry. And maybe I didn't hear it, Mr. Kennedy, and maybe wasn't. Did you have Mr. Ray Euro's report of November 1st? I did. I'm playing engineer tonight. Um, if you look at page two at the bottom of site requirements number five, um, has that been addressed? <coughs> Yeah, the, the original plans that we first looked at were nine foot. Now the actual unit itself is only seven and a half. The physical unit itself. So we'll adjust our plan to be seven and a half. I, I, we talked about it. We still think we want that 20 foot wide pad itself. But the physical unit itself got smaller than the original concept that we saw. If we take a look at the next page, number six. That's fine. Number seven, I know there's been testimony regarding the fence and the chain link. I think the question is, can we have a little testimony on or the note as to how it's going to interact with the chain link and the uh, acoustic fence? Yeah, so the, when I look at that information, the chain link fence is going to be 10 foot high. It comes in rolls of six foot, you know, when you looked at that information. So it will have to be cut for a roll of six foot and not to be cut four foot to go. And it shows on those details how it's lashed to the actual chain link fence. So there'll be um, um, a, a series of grommets that'll be lashed to the chain link fence that'll have a stainless steel type of thing that, that'll be attached to the fence going down that detail. Well, we looked at it, that same detail. But the six foot, that's the rolls it comes in, and it's rolled out, so again, another roll would have to be put on top of it, have to be butted together and then cut to that four foot height to get to ten foot. But the intent is, is all ten foot would have the acoustical panel on it. It's not intended to only have six foot and the top four foot to be just chain. The intent is all ten feet would have that acoustical panel. And the other two items are number 13A and 13B. I'd have to ask Joe on this, but again, I just what he said is there'll be some work, the plumbing work, duct work, um, electrical work, gas, some of those utilities would be in there, but there's no other big changes associated with it other than the connection into the existing space that's there with that piece of the control panel they talked about the embedded <coughs> in the unit itself that's been proposed, and there'll be uh, some type of enunciator or some other panel that would be in. I think the issue is with th more 13A, the security, the equipment, and access. Yeah, it'll be a, a, a double gate, and as was stated, there'll be a lock on that gate. And that's the only entrance into that space. And, and it, maybe it's a question for Mr. Mr. Gorman. Uh, who will have access, physical access, to the concrete pad HVAC unit? That would be uh, myself and, or the facility director, and then any of the maintenance staff, which we would have with regards to our HVAC and contractor, otherwise it would remain locked at all times. The key would be in with them and in the lock area. So, yes. Anything else, Bob? No. I Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Any more questions, comments? Last bite at the apple. Public. From the public? See the head shake now, so. Thank you. So, so uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Kennedy was our, our final witness. I hope that we've been able to answer the questions that your board professionals presented as well as the Environmental Commission. I, I think the project, looking at your ordinances, certainly warrants a, an amended site plan approval. And I believe Mr. Kennedy offered some um, expert planning testimony that would justify the bulk variance for um, the impervious coverage as well as uh, the variance to allow this accessory structure to be located in the front yard. Okay. So unless... I just okay. comment. I think you did a pretty good job on that. It seems pretty good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat>
And so unless there's any objections, I will ask Mr. Bernstein <coughs> to propose a resolution for us to consider. Mr. Chairman, this would be an approval of the application for Somerset County YMCA Hillsborough Branch 19 PB 16 SPV Block 12, Lot 22 at 19 East Mountain Road, approving the applicant's request for a minor site plan approval, C bulk variances and waivers, as well as all comments made by the board's planning consultant and engineer and all conditions uh, agreed upon by the applicant during the pendency of the testimony. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept. Okay, is there a second? Second. Oh. Okay, roll call please. Mr. Scobo? Yes. Mr. Pisa? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Hashtag? Yes. Mr. Chair Julian? Yes. Chair yes. yes. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, have a good evening. Good night. Uh, so we have no other applications. Taking a look at our agenda or upcoming meetings. You will have like we, you'll currently, Mr. Chairman, have applications for the two meetings in December. We don't want to deprive you of a full calendar for the rest of the year. Okay. One will be a repeat of a prior approved application. Mm -hmm. The other one appears to be, and I can only hope, the infamous it's hotel in on the Brookhaven site. Um, it's been the bulk of my career in the township yes, committee. Well, yours and mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the date, our next two meeting dates are, appear to be December fifth and December twelfth. Yeah, you know, again, just please let the. Uh, <clears throat> Planning office know if anyone's unable to make it. I know we're getting, you know, midst of holiday season, so I know schedules start to get tight and you get to have some uh, activities going on. So, um, so with that, I am going to entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Uh, see you all on December 5th. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.